You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. 1 Samuel 23, verse 7 to 24, verse 22. Two noble opponents. Saul is chasing David, who is now a powerful war leader with a strong following. And there are two stories where David has Saul at his mercy and spares him. The other in chapter 26 is in some ways more ambiguous and in others more clear-cut. It's more ambiguous if you read it with the opening of 27 as well. It contains more dark shadows. But let's focus on this story. Did you notice David's rhetoric? He has the gift of the gab, all right, and a good sense of a fine gesture. Afterwards, that is, after Saul has been being in the cave and David's cut off a bit of his robe, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My lord, the king! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you, and I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. Fine rhetoric. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. But my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be the judge, and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it, and plead my cause, and vindicate me against you. Yeah, I exaggerated a little bit, but you see what's going on. David's rhetoric is lovely. But, like any human being, David wants vindication. Unlike most human beings, David is willing to trust God for it. And that's the striking thing about David's actions in this story. Not his bravery, but that he is willing to trust God for the future. And having looked at David, let's spare Saul a glance, shall we? Verse 16. Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Okay. A psychiatrist can have a field day trying to psychoanalyze Saul. One thing is clear, he's not a simple character. He's not a cardboard cutout villain any more than he's a cardboard cutout hero. He goes on, saying to David in verse 17, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. See, at least some of the time, Saul is honest and sees the truth. Today, you have explained how you have dealt well with me in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? At his best, Saul, you see, is noble too, and magnanimous. So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day, and a prophet. Now I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. You're going to be king, and you're going to be the king that firms Israel up, that establishes Israel in a way that I can't. I've tried, but I can't. Verse 21. Swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. This is the plea of a man who knows that his successor stands before him in a world where such successors normally did their level best to wipe out the family of uh, the person they'd supplanted. This story presents us two noble characters. We know that both of them have their failings. In David's case, we know it because 
most of us have read on in the story. In Saul's case we know it because we've been following him through the story. Both of them have their failings, deep failings, but both of them can be noble. This is what human beings are like. We have the capacity to be noble, but we also have the brokenness of sin.